Hello everyone! So, I have another tutorial for you. And this time, it's about how I do my warp effects in 3D Studio. And um, I'm going to give you a basic rundown on uh, the methodol methodology and the, the thinking process behind it. So, the basics are, I'm using V-Ray to render, and I hijack the V-Ray motion blur system to add motion blur where a typical object moving would not have it. Um, so the basics are, I have a spline that is the warp in path. So if I scrub along this, you can see the ship kind, kind of comes in and you can see it's flickering in and out. And what that is doing is every other flip frame, it's moving it forwards and backwards along that spline. Uh, to give you an example, uh, if I go in here on this dummy or this point controller, I have a uh, position path constraint with the percent as a float list with two Bezier floats. And uh, basically what that's doing is between the two, it is blending in that secondary Bezier float that is in and out dependent on a weight. And basically I just reduce that weight as the, as the ship gets closer to its end point. So if you look at the curve editor, what that looks like is, here's the percentage. And you can see it's, uh, let me zoom in here and then, uh, oh, that's not the button I wanted. There you go. So that's the vibration overall so it starts off vibrating very very much and then as it gets closer and closer to the to the stop point it slows down and what i do for that is i simply have this guy right here which is just a uh, a single um where the frames are on this well they're way over here basically i just have them uh curving in and then i have the out of frame range which is right here set to cycle so it just loops those two frames over and over and over. Um, and then the um, uh, primary curve is just from 100% way out there in the distance to it zooms in, slows down, and then stops right there. And then, yeah. So the basic, under, basic way I'm doing this is... Uh, that, but in four different methods. Uh, so those are these four different uh, point helpers. So this one is the primary ship, as you can see here when I select it. It, it does all the, all the, the main ship stuff. Uh, this one right here is uh, the orange and blue streaks. And those have a different vibrating amount. They're much, they're 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 vibrating at a much higher rate and a much further distance. So the streaks extend out beyond the back of the ship further. Uh, and then this right here is the one for the streaky lights. And those are an actual additional model. So what I did, uh, go ahead and show it as an actual object. What I did is I just copied all the glass portions of my of my windows gave them some depth and give them a very bright shader that is using the uh, the same uh, fall off curve for its intensity. So as it gets as it's farther away, it's very, very bright. So you get these long, like crazy streaks. But then as it gets closer, it shortens up and gets, you know, a little bit dimmer so that the, the relative brightness of the streaks stays the same. Um, yeah, so this is all done in camera. So if I jump back over to uh, the comp here, you can see uh, kind of what this looks like as it comes in. Those streaks are super long and bright, and then it starts to tighten up until it stops. So these guys are extending out in front of the ship slightly to kind of give it a little bit of a of a of a almost a jello effect for the for the collapsing into itself. Um, yeah, so. The only other thing that I'm doing is that as the orange and blue streaks from the from the engines fade out, I fade up very briefly a blue like haze around the uh, 
around the ship that doesn't last very long and then just sort of shuts off right there. Sort of snaps into place and then calms down. So, yeah. Uh, that's basically how I'm doing the warp effects. Uh, you can change that spline to be any curve you want. Um, and uh, it's like I said, it's all done in render. The only tricky part to this is in uh, the um, in the render settings for this particular one. I don't know if it'll let me. Yeah, it'll let me. Um, I have to set for for the part of this where the warp is happening. I set the geometry samples to twelve. Uh, for the motion blur. Otherwise, it becomes just very segmented, and you don't get that nice smooth curve of the of the of the ship coming in uh, motion wise. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to post a version of this in uh, 3ds Max format with just the the basic shapes uh, and uh, a uh, a decimated version of the ship, so you can kind of see how it's done. But yeah, you can see it vibrates in. And that's basically just cheating the uh, the motion blur. Um, yeah, it's super cool. Uh, it it is uh, extremely cheaty, but again, I cannot argue with the the end results on this being as nice and clean as this. Like it just looks awesome. Uh, and the benefit of this is that it's all uh, I have it all constrained under a single point helper. This guy, and I can rotate it however I want, and have that thing come in at a different angle. Um, you, you can alter, alter the spline, you can move it around. Um, the way I have this set up, and I'll turn the grid on here. Um, basically, I have the ship only moving as it's warping in, and the camera is moving for the rest of it to get the flyby effect of that ship passing through. So that's how that's done. It's 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 uh, very easy to control uh, and to do a warp out effect. Basically, uh, I have the exact same system set up. I just reverse the keys and flip the ship around like 180 degrees, and then it'll zip out. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Uh, it's once once you get it tuned out to look as good as it does, like doing multiple ships warping in. All you got to do is uh, replace the uh, the light um, object. These guys with whatever bespoke lights are on that ship. Uh, replace the uh, these guys that are the the streak layout shapes to match the layout of the ship, and just parent them to it. And it's done, and you can you can have any number of different kinds of ships warping in and out, and you don't have to mess with it. Um, all the keys for all the uh, the materials and stuff are all linked together with the the fade in, uh, being uh, using uh, uh, the the curves as a uh, as a as a um, as an instance. Um, so the main thing that you need to to keep in mind is that by default. When you have a uh, a path constraint, the um, oh, percentage along path option is a linear float. You can't do nice smooth curves. So the first thing you want to do is convert that to a Bezier float, and then you can do all your nice curves and stuff and make it work really well. Uh, so yeah, that's the basics of it. Um, it's a lot of cheating. Um, Oh, there's one other thing. Um, I'm also hijacking the uh, the the motion blur on the um, on the on the glow objects by uh, having this push modifier on them that is also animating and, and vibrating in and out um, every other frame. So basically, what it's doing is is it, it's expanding and contracting the mesh every frame, and it uh, it makes it far more volumetric. So. These are just geometry shapes with a like a fall off shader on them, and it's just pushing them in and out, and you get like this really nice like hazy blurry effect off of that for free. Um, yeah, uh, I mean each frame of this took like I mean admittedly I'm rendering on a 4090, but each frame of this took like a minute. Um, 
it only really starts to to like the renders only really start to bog down once you get you know uh close up to the ship like here and then it takes two minutes uh and that's just because there's more of the ship in frame and it's doing a lot of like uh bounce lighting and stuff that needs to resolve um but uh yeah once it gets to about here it's back down to a minute of frame and then it's just basically a minute all the way through and the vast majority of that time is uploading the textures to the video card um because i'm render I, i've got a, a pretty high resolution um hdr going on here in the background uh and it i don't know it, it it's a couple hundred megabytes that has to get up, uploaded to the card every frame uh rather than just staying resident in memory uh and that ends up being about 35 to 40 seconds of the render time is just like pushing textures to the card. Uh, if it didn't have to do that, these frame times would be 15, 30 seconds easily uh, for most of them. This would probably still be a minute or so. But yeah, it's quick. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's how I do it. Uh, hope this has been educational and or interesting. Have a good one.